Rental estimates are a critical data point for any real estate investor. I use rental rates for my deal evaluation to see if a property will cash flow or not. I've shown how to get rental estimates at scale for multiple properties using Python. But what if you don't know how to code? Can you still systematize and automate this process of deal evaluation? Yes. In this video, I'm going to use the Rentcast API with Zapier to automatically add property records and rental data to your spreadsheet, all without a single line of code. You will be able to analyze markets fast and at scale. My name is Ariel Herrera, your fellow data scientist. For this tutorial, we will take it step by step so that even if you are new to Zapier, it will not be overwhelming. My mission with this channel is to simplify success for you and ideally help you avoid a lot of the mistakes that I made in my four year investor journey. And so I want to help you build a data driven business with APIs to improve your processes. And if that's exciting to you, be sure to hit the like button so we can reach more people and be sure to subscribe for new videos every single week. All right, let's get started. In this video, we're going to take a blank spreadsheet that has information on a full address, property details, property estimate, rent estimate, and be able to actually populate everything from column B on automatically using Zapier and the Rentcast API. Our end result is going to look something similar to this, where we're able to enter a full address and within only minutes or seconds, we're able to automatically see our spreadsheet fill out on the property type, beds and baths, square footage, property estimate, rent estimate, and then automatically calculate price per square foot and whether or not this property meets the 1% rule. So how are we going to do this? How do we input an address and then all this stuff populates automatically? We're going to use Zapier, which is a free tool, particularly for this use case, we're going to go up a tier so that we can leverage webhooks. And that will allow us to connect to the Rentcast API without having to write any code. So what is Zapier? Zapier is a tool that helps to connect different applications. And at the heart of it, it's all about automation. And if you're new to automation, automation is simply setting something up to run automatically. So instead of having to manually go say to Zillow or Redfin and copy all this property information down and then write a formula to calculate some of your metrics, this can all be done automatically in seconds and let you focus on more important parts of a deal, like actually communicating with the homeowner or agent on the property. So ultimately, an example for Zapier, it goes twofold. So when something happens, when something triggers a Zap, it then kicks off a series of actions. So for example, they have here, when you get a new email from a lead, then notify sales team via text. We are going to use something a little bit different. We're going to use Google Sheets. So every time that we have a new address in a certain cell, our action is then going to communicate with Rentcast API to be able to get our property records and rent estimate data. Now, if you're new to Rentcast API, it is a service that provides data for property records, market statistics, rental estimates, and more. What's amazing about this is that you're able to easily extract this data via an API instead of fumbling through spreadsheets that could potentially be outdated. Rentcast has been doing this for a number of years, previously known as Realty Mole, and now they have a newer version, version two of this API called Rentcast that is very powerful. I highly suggest for you to check out the prior videos that I've done on this. So what we're going to do first is make sure that you have a Zapier account. You could get started for free if you'd like and go through the free trial, but make sure that your free trial has the higher tier so that we could use webhooks that will allow us to communicate with the Rentcast API. And if you haven't gotten your Rentcast API yet, it's a long string, about 20 characters or so, you need to be able to go to the website, quickly sign up. Again, you could do this for free. 
and get your RentCast API. I have a prior video that takes less than five minutes to quickly set that up. So once you have your Zapier account, that's premium at minimum, then you have your RentCast API that can be the free version. We will then use Zapier here to create our workflow. Once you create a Zapier account, you're going to go to your private folders. Here you can create a new folder. I have one for YouTube channel content. I'm going to create a new Zap by clicking the Create button and then selecting New Zap. Next, I'm going to rename my Zap on the top left hand side. You can name it anything you'd like. In this case, I'm going to name it Rentcast. For Zapier, there's two main parts. There's Trigger, which you will only have one trigger per Zap, and Actions. A trigger is an event that starts your Zap action. An event is an action a Zap performs after it starts. Let's start with Trigger. For our Trigger, let's type Google Sheets. Select New Spreadsheet Row. We want to extract data from RentCast every single time we enter a new property address in our first column. Hit Continue. Choose your account. I'm going to select my Analytics Ariel account. Click Continue. Select the spreadsheet. Spreadsheets are ordered by most recent. You should see the demo spreadsheet come up as the first one. Make sure you make a copy of the spreadsheet that I provided below. Select the first sheet within the worksheet. Now test your trigger. When you test your trigger, it's not going to find any rows because we still have to input a row. So let's go over to Zillow and use our example city, which is Cleveland. I'm going to select a property and copy one of the addresses. Then I am pasting the address within Google Sheets. I am going to click Test Trigger once more within Zapier. And now Zapier is able to recognize the first record, which is the property address we just entered. So let's click Continue with the selected record. Now that we've set up our trigger, it's time to set up our action. Our first action is going to be a webhook. Webhook is for a premium account. You will need to upgrade in order to use the feature. We are going to make a GET request to RentCast API. Let's go to the API documentation. We will start with the property records first because we want to bring in property attributes for the address that we enter. Copy the endpoint up top. Paste the endpoint under the URL. Then for the query string parameters, we will reference address. Let's copy the parameter name. In step one of our trigger, it has all of our fields from our spreadsheet. Let's find full address and select it. This will dynamically select the address that is entered each and every time we have a new row. Now for our headers. Let's shift back to Python and copy over the headers in the example code. We will also want to copy the RentCast API key as well. Click Continue and Test Action. Once the request is sent, we can now see our response data. We have information on the property including bathrooms, bedrooms, square footage, and so much more. However, we are not done. We still want to get estimates for both the property and for rent. Let's click Action. We are going to add the next webhook. This will be a GET request once again. Let's shift back to the RentCast API docs. Select Value Estimate Endpoint under Property Valuation. Let's copy the endpoint URL at the top and map it as the URL value for Zapier's webhook URL. For query string parameters, we're going to have a few more than we did previously. We want to get the sales comp as close as possible to the subject property. Let's start with property address. This is taken from the spreadsheet trigger. Let's add another query parameter. If we look at the docs, we can also enter property type, bedrooms, bathrooms, and square footage. This is going to come from our second step where we are getting property record detail. Let's select each corresponding field. Starting with property type, we can enter it in the search bar and quickly select a field. I'm going to repeat this for the rest of the attributes.
Next, let's enter in our headers. This will be the same as we did in the prior webhook action. Click Continue. Let's test our step. Our test will send a request to RentCast. This will return a response of the property estimate details. Here we can see that we have received a price field, which should be our property estimate as well as comparables. Let's start to rename our action on the left-hand side so we have a better understanding of what each step does. If you go over and click the three dots, you can click Rename. Let's call the first one Property Records and the second one, let's call it Property Estimates. We have one more webhook action to create. Let's add an action, search webhook, make a get request, change the action name up top to Rental Estimates. Click Continue. Navigate over to the RentCast API. Select Rent Estimate, copy the endpoint and place it into the Zapier URL. Let's follow the same steps as we did for the property value estimate. For our parameters, we will include address, property type, bedrooms, bathrooms, and square footage. Let's repeat the same steps with headers as well. We are going to enter our API key too. Once complete, click Continue. Then test our step. We can now see rental estimate price as well as comparables. Let's finish off our zap by entering this data automatically into a spreadsheet. To do so, let's create our last action which will be for Google Sheets. For event, select Update Spreadsheet Row. Click Continue. And search for the file under Google Drive. Select the first worksheet. In order to dynamically get our row, we are going to shift over to Custom and select the Row ID. Now we see all of our columns in our spreadsheet. This includes full address, which we've already filled out during the start of our trigger. Let's jump over to property type. This will come from our property records. Let's search the field and select it for property type, beds, baths, and square footage. Property estimate is going to come from the property estimates webhook, and rent estimate will come from the rent estimates webhook. We will leave price per square foot and 1% rule field blank since those are going to be derived within Google Sheets. Let's click Continue and test our step. Zapier will now send these records over to our new row. Let's tap over to our Google Sheet. Awesome, we can see that our fields are in our spreadsheet. We are the first four fields that come directly from our property records. In column F, property estimate comes from our value estimate endpoint, and rent estimate comes from our rent endpoint. Once these fields are populated by Zapier, columns H and I, price per square foot and 1% rule flag, automatically populate since these are formulas within Google Sheet. Let's go back to Zapier. We are now satisfied with our Zap. Let's click Publish. Zapier has now published our Zap. We have a new workflow. Each time an address is added to our spreadsheet, it will automatically kick off a series of webhooks to get the property records, sales, and rent estimates. Let's go to our zaps. Let's select the new zap that we just created. On the left-hand side, we can click History to view triggers of our zap. In this case, we haven't triggered our zap yet. Let's add a new row to our spreadsheet to test it out. Let's go to Cleveland, Ohio in Zillow and select a property. Copy the property address and enter it into row three. Hit Enter. We may need to wait a few seconds depending on the tier of our Zapier account. This will depend on how often Zapier looks for changes. For me, it took about one minute to populate the Google Sheet fields. The RentCast API fields automatically populated for this full address. The price per square foot is about $124 and the 1% rule flag does not pass. 
However, if we go back to Zillow, we have a bit of an advantage because this is a property that is on market. So it's publicly available to see the listing price. Let's change our property estimate to the listing price of 115K. When we change it, we can see that the 1% rule has now changed to true. That's because 1% of our property estimate is $1,115, which is less than our rent estimate. Therefore, it passes. Congratulations, you've been able to create your first Zap in minutes and leverage a new API. Now, what if you don't want to enter properties in manually every time maybe a new listing comes on market? Well, in that case, I highly suggest for you to check out Coffee Closers. This is a company not only co-created by yours truly, but I'm actually the data scientist behind this product. I've been able to leverage all these previous data sources that I've referenced for four years now in different videos and put it all together in one single tool with two amazing co-founders that allow you to see all properties that are on market and quickly be able to retrieve stats. So let's take a quick look. Right now we're back on Cleveland, Ohio. If you wanted to quickly gauge which neighborhoods have better cash flow, you can do so with our map tool on the right hand side. You could also download all of these addresses and get them into a spreadsheet. This spreadsheet will automatically have import and metrics that you need as an investor calculated. You can even see the formulas behind each of these columns. This is so powerful. You're able to actually amend, edit, change as you'd like for your fitting, but it gets even better. So not only do we show the best properties up front, but if you actually go to our property details, you could see even more information. For example, this property in Cleveland, we could see that it has the potential to add a bedroom. This is a proprietary algorithm that yours truly has built to be able to detect properties that are larger in size and potentially could have an extra bedroom added. What does that mean? More cash flow, and you can have an even better opportunity as an investor because you could likely convert one of the larger rooms, maybe a dining room, into a bedroom. Then here you could see rent and asking price. So let's imagine that we do purchase this property. We're able to put maybe only $1,000 in, convert one of the bedrooms or the rooms to a bedroom. Let's see, maybe we can ask an extra $300 in rent. So let's change this to $1,600 and we could see automatically our cash flow, our monthly profit, has changed to be a positive number that's a little over $400, as well as a high cash on cash return. If it's a market that is leaning more towards buyers and sellers, we could likely get a discount, let's say 5% below asking price, and we see how our monthly profit and cash on cash numbers change automatically. So definitely check out Coffee Closers as we utilize Rentcast API, um, within our metrics as well, including a whole other suite of APIs. And if you have any questions in terms of deal evaluation, automation, then make sure that you check out our tech and real estate Facebook group, where we have experts, including myself and others readily available to help answer questions for our community. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.